now we are going to see the examples that we have studied in this week and we will consider those examples and see them how you can solve them using python okay so the first example so i have saved it over here let me just copy it from this side so sorry so this is the example that we had that during a competitive exam a reasoning test is administered in a two day period monday and tuesday and each of these days 10000 individuals participated for monday and tuesday both we know that they all both followed normal distribution with different means and standard deviations that is given to us and we had to randomly choose 25 individuals from those who gave the exam on monday and you select let me just bring it down and we select 20 individuals from the group who took the tuesday exam and denote their score as this so what is the distribution of this difference of the sample means so if you have to write the code for this and solve this problem then let us see how we can do that so first of all as you know we have imported your numpy and matplotlib is also there and from scipy.stats let us see if you have imported your norm function no norm we have not imported so let me just write from scipy dot stats import nor okay so this is used for working with the normal distribution now we need to specify the parameters for monday and tuesday so the mean first of all let us just write mean underscore m this would mean it is for monday mean is given as sixty eight in this case and standard deviation for monday is also given to us which is 8 in this case and what is the sample size that we have taken maybe write sample size sample underscore size underscore m this is basically given to us as 25 this is for monday likewise we can define these for your second day that is tuesday for tuesday the mean is 52 and standard deviation given to you is 9 and finally the sample size is 20 right now these are the parameters that have been defined now you need to calculate the sample means for both of them so that you can see and calculate the mean difference that is x m bar and x t bar right x1 bar minus x2 bar x2 bar is what in which you are interested in so we will calculate the distribution of this so let us write mean underscore difference is mean underscore m minus mean underscore tuesday okay and std of this difference standard deviation would be because the formula is sigma 1 square over n1 plus sigma 2 square over n2 so mu1 this is mu1 minus mu2 basically so maybe i could write here comment it so mu1 mu1 minus mu2 and for the variance it is sigma 1 square over n1 plus sigma 2 square over n2 so in this case since we are writing the standard deviation we also need the square root so we can use this numpy here numpy is library is this one square root function so np dot sqrt so here we need the standard deviation of monday that is sigma 1 square std of monday we need the square of this we need it power 2 divided by sample size of monday that is sample underscore size underscore monday okay so here one more bracket would be there because first this will be solved then plus of the same quantity over here for tuesday sigma 2 square over n2 so here we would have instead of m you will have tuesday and sample size will also be for tuesday okay 
now you can print using this f string over here that x underscore m minus x underscore t these two it follows your normal distribution with mean and variance so this is the mean in with which it follows so it would evaluate it so it is better to write in curly bracket so mean difference and then you would write the standard deviation differences okay and since in the normal distribution we usually write variance so we use this for power so square after this we will close this okay so first it will evaluate mean difference and this from the above two lines and then it would print the corresponding statement that the distribution of the, the difference of the mean follows normal distribution and so on so let us see name std sorry this one would be t sorry sorry yeah this is the mistake yeah let me rerun this now so what it is displaying it is showing that the difference of the two means follows normal distribution so mean is coming out as mu1 minus mu2 is 616 and this variance is basically sigma1 square over n1 plus sigma2 square over n2 is this right and in this case we had the second part where we had to find out the probability that this difference is greater than or equal to 10 so for that to hold true we have to find the z score so if we just write here only so z score basically would be so 10 we want it to be greater than 10 so 10 minus the mean difference this thing x minus mu by sigma and we divide by this standard error over here okay we can print this z score whatever is the value we can see what it is print z score is equal to so z score now we are specifying this formatting that we want it for four degrees of freedom so this would be evaluated and it will print the corresponding z score from this line now it will calculate the probability that 1 minus of this because here let us me let me just write it 1 minus norm dot cdf z score z score is what you have defined just now so here it is calculating the z score and norm dot cdf is basically used to calculate the cumulative probability of observing a value less than the z score right but here we are interested in if the difference of these two means is greater than or equal to 10 it means that we need to subtract it from 1 okay so that is why we are subtracting it over here so once the z score is calculated you will use this function over here and calculate the cumulative probability and then you will subtract from 1 and finally you can print this if you want let us see print so probability that xm minus xt xm in fact it should be xm bar okay so here we have not displayed that x we are just writing xm okay x it should be the mean difference of the two means this is greater than or equal to 10 so this prob this it would print it will first solve this probability and it will specify up to four decimal places okay so here also z score this is a format specifier up to four decimal places and this would end it okay 
So, the difference of the two means is following normal with this mean and variance and uh, here also we are writing the z score came out to be minus 2.337 and you can cross check it the one that we discussed in the class and here you can see that when you find this probability it comes out as 0 0.9902. So, you can easily solve these examples using python. So, in earlier classes we have seen that given from that OTT data set how do you solve that right you have to extract the column and then you can apply it and now here directly if suppose somebody is giving you this concise information then you can use write these codes to find out the desired answer okay so this is your first example so let me just write over here next we can have your second example so let us just copy it from here our second example is th was that you have two separate experiments and the battery life of two different brands of smartphones is compared in the first experiment 20 smartphones from brand a undergo testing and their duration is recorded they follow normal again from the second one 25 are given they both are normally distributed and you know the mean and here you can see that variance mean for both of them is given and additionally their standard deviation is same that is true right so this is the second case that we studied and in this case you will not have sigma 1 square and sigma 2 square rather you will have just the same sigma okay so in the same way it can be written You have already imported numpy, so let me just write import scipy dot stats as stats. Okay. You can specify the parameters for band A and brand B. So for that you can write mean underscore A is equal to so here it is given as 17 and it's sigma we can just write sigma because in both the cases sigma a will be same so maybe we can just repeat it sigma a is given to us as 2 and n a that is the sample size is given to us in this case it is 20 and in the other one it is 25 sigma b and then b so this is 2 this is 25 and mean for b is 15 hours okay now again you have to calculate mu a minus mu b that is mean the difference of the two means and the corresponding standard deviation maybe we can use it from here this formula that we have already written we can edit it so the mean difference would be mean a minus mean b okay and the standard deviation this would be np dot square root of this or maybe if you just want the variance you can directly find variance and here you do not have to calculate this square root okay so just you will use standard so here we have written sigma so let me just use sigma so sigma underscore a would come and here n underscore a would come okay and this side it would again be sigma underscore b and here it would be the sample size corresponding to b okay so mean difference and variance you have obtained now you can calculate the z scores so z score would be because you have to ultimately find the probability that the difference between their means is greater than or equal to 0 so basically for a x bar a is greater than or equal to x bar b for that you need to first of all find the z score so z score here it will be 0 minus because 0 is the value with which we want to see here this mean difference would be there and you would divide it by 
there you have standard error right so here maybe either you apply the square root over here right when you are writing the variance instead of that as we have done earlier or you can just simply use the square root function at this point okay so you can now calculate the probability of 1 minus stats dot nor dot cdf and here you can write the z score okay so it will calculate this probability and then it would subtract from 1 because it would create it because here we want it to be greater than or equal to 0 right so here it would first evaluate your cumulative probability of observing a value less than or equal to the z score and when you subtract from 1 it means that you are interested in the very vari random variable that is it is greater than or equal to this okay so if you run this so okay so somewhere this bracket okay yeah and b is not defined Now you want to print because here we want to print so we have not given that command print f probability that x a minus x b is greater than equal to 0. This is same as this probability so this is prob and we want it to 4 degrees of freedom so we can specify that you can see that it comes out as 0.9992 so here one thing that you notice that instead of writing the square root in this case you can use the square root at this end now another thing is that we have written 1 minus stats dot norm dot cdf so we have till now been using norm dot cdf directly the reason is that here we have imported scipy dot stats as stats itself and when now in this case you need to mention because this is the stats that you have this is the alias or the convention that we have used okay we will be calling this with this stats so stats dot norm you have to write so you are using a function from this scipy dot stats okay otherwise if you have imported as we have mentioned here from scipy dot stats if you have imported norm then you can directly write norm over here as we have done okay so you have imported the norm object from the scipy dot stats library so there is this is the difference both are same and correct so it depends on how you have imported it and that same function you would use here right if you have imported this and you have not imported the norm then just directly writing this like norm dot pdf if you write then it would be wrong in this case it would give you because we have already imported norm somewhere else so here we need to mention this in this way so the third example was on your let me just show that here we had to calculate your pooled standard deviation so in this case what we have to do i can briefly tell you that first of all these are the data values that you have to enter so for this you have the numpy library and these you will define these as arrays okay and you will specify their means you can find the means basically using the numpy's mean function for both of them and so maybe i will just write for this the next one you can solve it on your own so the third example okay so let us import numpy as np now we have to define the data for your plant a and plant b so let me just write data underscore a so here we will use numpy array np dot array we are defining 
and what is what are the values so these values we have to enter right so 1.59 2.51 1.8 5 1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.1 1.
Oh yeah, here I should have written this. So it is going up to 1.891 something, so many decimal places. So if you want to format it up to 4 or 2 decimal places, you can use this formatting and print your result. So likewise, you can do for other examples because here in this case, again, you will enter this data okay, and you have to find your T statistic in this case. So you will calculate the sample mean, the before date because here in this case, you will have DIs, the difference of the two before date and after date, mean differences corresponding standard deviation. So, di would be calculated, then sample mean that is d bar, sd would be calculated, okay, and you length you can calculate and find the substitute the, in the formula and you will get the answer to that. Likewise, for the proportion also, you can define the proportion, what are the different proportions, the sample size in this case, and you just substitute in the formula of the standard error. So, standard error would be basically p1 into 1 minus p1 divided by n1 plus p2 into 1 minus p2 over n2. So, in this case for these values you can just write the code for this, maybe you can try at home on your own and see what will be the code to these. You can calculate the z score then in this case because it is saying that you want to see what is the probability that the proportion of medicine with this side effect from drug manufacturer B exceeds that from drug manufacturer A. So, you need to calculate the z score. So, 0 minus p difference, okay, the difference of the two means divided by the corresponding standard error and finally, you can calculate the p norm, okay. So, basically for any given problem, you can write the code as I have just explained the process of doing that. These are basic steps that you need to follow. Thank you.